Hey guys, what's caking? Welcome to another edition of Caking All The Way. It's me, your host, Lola Deogujimi. And today's edition, we'll be taking you right back to the foundation of any cake business. We'll be talking about how to start your cake business from scratch. We're going to talk about a business name. We're going to talk about how to develop your products. We're going to talk about finances. All the work, guys. You don't want to miss this edition. So if it sounds like something you want to be part of, stay tuned. Yes, we're back. So number one on the list is the cake business name. Now, why is the cake business name so important? This is what your customers or people who don't know you will hear for the first time. And believe me, there's some people who will just call you because of your name. So you can choose your cake business name from your personal names. What's your middle name? Do you have an English name? Do you have a native name? Do you have a name that by the time you pair with something that is used in the bakery setup, it makes sense? So what do I mean? Lola Day's Oven, Elizabeth's Kitchen, Elizabeth's Bakery. Another example of a name is you could use a locality or the name of your country or the name of your state okay it could be Lagos Bakes Lekki Bakery I have a friend who has a bakery in Lagos called Salt Lagos all right you can also use elements around your kitchen you could say like cinnamon cakes or cinnamon bakes you could use things like whisk and crumbs or eggs and what salt something that people would listen to and immediately can tell that this is a bakery business name we are called dainty affairs but dainty affairs i mean if someone just hears dainty affairs you wouldn't know that we do cakes here but we creatively put bakery right under that name so people already can tell that this is a bakery the main goal though is for you to choose a name that would allow you to grow so we found out that when someone starts a cake business they probably started out just making what cupcakes and so for example um, i call my bakery business lola days cupcakes now what this has done is it will not allow the business to grow because we all start out in this journey doing one thing and before we know it we evolve and start doing other things so what about two three four years from now i start to do something else i start to do what desserts we start to do wedding cakes but because we have called ourselves Lola Day's Cupcakes, we have chosen the wrong name, okay? So again, just understand that whatever name you choose, think about the future. Don't just think about what you're doing now. If you don't have a name that would allow you to grow, you will find out that two, three, four years after starting your business, you now have to change the cake business name. Now that we have a name, let's go to the next point. Now, you have to register your name. You have to register your business name. But before you even get to registering your business name, you need to decide what type of business you want to run. Do you want to run it solely? Do you want to run it as a partnership? Or do you want it to be a limited liability company where you have shareholders? Once you have decided on the structure of your bakery business, okay, then you can now um, register with the CAC, which is what we use here in Nigeria, which is a um, Corporate Affairs Commission or depending on where you live around the world, just find out the proper agency that allows you to register your business officially. Now, when you register your business officially, it does two things for you. Automatically, you feel that you've taken your business from a hobby level to a proper serious business. And once you have done that, you can open a business account, okay, with your bank in that business name so that when your customers come calling, you're not giving them an account number that has your name. It has a way of um, not allowing your business to have the proper respect it should have, all right? So again, we got a name, we decided on the kind of structure we want to run. Once we've done that, then we register with the right authorities. So that's one and two. Now, for number three, you need to decide on the type of products you will be putting out for your customers. We have a particular edition where we talked about this at length, what to consider before you, you know, itemize and put out for the world 
to see as your products. You can check out the link below, okay? And just go through that and see how that can also help you with your product development. So the next tip, guys, is to get your house in order. After you've decided the products you even want to put out for the world, you need to decide the medium by which the world can connect with you. So you're talking your phone number, your email address, you're talking about anything that will connect customers to you properly in an organized manner okay so you want to make sure you have a phone number that is not your personal phone number and this is because that will completely make you or turn you to someone working like a headless chicken guys if you're still using your personal phone number to run your business you will not have a life because customers or you've given the customers an avenue to reach you anytime, anywhere, any place. And that is wrong. You want to make sure that you have gotten a completely different phone number or numbers that you will put out for the world. And you let your customers know that this number or we are open for business at this specific time to that specific time. So let's say from 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So once it's 8 o'clock, you put on that number. And once it's 6 o'clock, you want to turn off that phone number. All right? Because once your clients understand the way to reach you, believe me, they will respect it. But if it's just open-ended and it's your personal line, you will find out that some customers will even be calling you at 8, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And that is true. I'm sure you know what I mean. You also want to make sure that you have a dedicated email address. Again, not your personal email address. All right, make sure that email address has your business name attached to it. So this is lolade at daintyaffairs.com. Would you use that instead of a lolade at yahoo.com? I would prefer you to use your business name. This makes your business have an outlook that is larger than life. And once you do this, a lot more respected or reputable, so to speak. And how do you actually do this? It's about you using a third party okay, to um, generate your email address. But before you even do that, you need to make sure that you have registered your business name on a domain site, all right? I'll have a link on the bio to show you details of how you can get this done. Now, the fifth point is about getting your house ready, all right? And I'm talking about your operations. You know, when you talk about bakery business operations, you're talking about what the actual workspace looks like, you're talking about the people who work with you and you're talking about how your business is run on a daily basis. Now, the workspace. Now, if you're working from home, that is absolutely fine. Just make sure you have a dedicated space in your home that is carved out for your bakery business. And then if you're, you know, making use of some of the items that is used for your personal everyday kitchen um, runs, you want to make sure you have clearly marked out what is used for your bakery or I will just advise you to have a part of your pantry that is specifically lined out for the items you use for your bakery business but hey if you've started out and you have a retail store you want to even make sure that your bakery or your back end is properly arranged and secure for the kind of business you want to do for us here in Nigeria you want to make sure that your gas which is your cylinder, is not in the same space as your oven or your cooker. You want to make sure it is completely outside the premises, okay? Just um, get the, the right company to help you connect it in such a way that your gas is not inside the same space as your oven and your cooker. You want to make sure your work surfaces are mostly marble or stainless steel. Please, guys, stay away from any material that is highly flammable, okay? Now that, you know, you've sorted out all of that, you want to also make sure that your edibles are separated completely from the inedibles. So I'm talking about your flour, your sugar, your eggs. Let them be in a completely different space from your stuff like cake pans, um, your cleaning agents, um, cake boards, you know, all those supplies that are not edible. Completely separate them from themselves in your space. You also want to have a space that is dedicated to where work is done, all right? You also want to have a space where you can do some administrative work. Believe it or not, as a cake business owner, 
while you start the business, you're going to be doing a lot of work on your desk. And that is the truth. You're going to be answering questions on the phone. You're going to be uh, responding to emails. You're going to be sitting down to strategize. You're going to be developing things. And this has to be done in an atmosphere that makes you feel, okay, I'm doing something really serious. So that while you're even in that space doing all the executive work, so to speak, you have your staff or your team members at a place where they're doing the everyday hand work that needs to make your business run smoothly. You also need to think about logistics, all right? When you make your products, who is going to deliver? You are a cake business owner. You are not a delivery person, all right? Don't allow any customer stifle you or make you feel that you are supposed to deliver the cake you have made to them. That is improper. Focus on what you have been paid to do, which is to design a cake for them. Now, you need to get a proper company that would help you deliver your cakes in the right atmosphere. Here in Nigeria, we have a lot of dispatch companies. They are so popular and they're everywhere. Before you, you know, narrow down to a dispatch, a dispatch company will come using their motorbikes, right? You cannot transport a cake in a motorbike. That is an absolute no-no, all right? You can only transport things like inedibles, cookies, or treats that have been properly packed in a dispatch situation. And of course, the cost of you know, delivering cakes with a dispatch is completely different from the cost of delivering a cake with a proper car. Now, what do we do at the Dainty Affairs Bakery? Now, we have dedicated companies that we use to deliver our cakes. And these companies have been tried and tested. They know how to manage our cakes. So a lot of times we tell customers, leave delivery to us. Because if you pick up the cake, especially if it's a two-tier cake, we will not be liable for any errors or mistakes that happen to the cake while it's en route to you. So you just want to make sure that you have clearly spelled out your house rules, okay? Doing that gives you a lot of sanity. And guys, honestly, the general operations of a bakery business is not a talk we can add into our discussion today. And so I have a dedicated course that you can actually take. The link is down below and it will actually take you step by step on how to run your bakery business with ease so that you can do less of standing in the kitchen and more of doing what you love the most, which is connecting with your customers, developing your brand, your style, marketing, and all those other interesting things. Now, it is structure that has allowed me to sit down here with you today and talk about what I enjoy doing while my staff are, you know, working and making sure all the cakes we have are being done and done in a specific way. Now, how cool is that? So just before we go to the next tip, this is something I want you to consider and consider very well. You need to think about your labeling, your packaging, okay? You know, when we finish these cakes, we just don't send it off like that. They have to be properly finished and boxed in a befitting package. All right, now are you going to be using generic white boxes or you'll be using branded boxes? Now, I will say if you're starting out, do not put too much pressure on yourself. Start out with just the white boxes, all right? You can always grow into using the branded boxes. We at Dainty Affairs, for some of our line, we just, you know, use the white boxes. And then for some of our lines, like the RTGs we use, which is our ready-to-go line, we use branded boxes. Now. The white boxes also have to be labeled. Now, if you're going to label your boxes, make sure it has your logo. You know, you've chosen your name now. You definitely have to have a logo that would, you know, be befitting for your business. And we advise you to use that logo on your cake labels. And of course, you want to put your phone number. You want to put, you know, anything that a client who didn't even order your cakes can actually see on your cake box and know that it is from you and then they can contact you as well so that is something to consider now packaging and labeling they go hand in hand so you want to put that at the back of your mind the next tip is branding don't you love our brand the dainty affairs brand is so true to my personality and it is so easy for me to create this brand because you know 
the Dainty Affairs brand has become me and I have become the Dainty Affairs brand. Now, as an operations and branding specialist, I have come to understand the power of branding and what it can do to any business at all. Now, when you think about Walt Disney, what do you think about? Once, once we even see that name, you can already think about um, joy, happiness, children, family. That is what branding should do. A brand of any business should automatically paint a picture in the mind of your customer. So your brand is like a personality on its own. You will find out that a lot of cake business owners are introverts. And being an introvert, you cannot run a bakery business. A bakery business cannot be shy. So you even first of all have to demarcate the two. So while you, the bakery business owner, is very shy, you don't like the world seeing you, you want people to see your business and you want them to be attracted to you and, you know, come knocking at the door to get your products. So your branding has to be true to your company's vision, mission, and core values, all right? Why should this happen? So that people can quickly connect with you and see what you're about. And I need to let you know that your branding will also determine how your customers will value you. So don't be careless with this. Get a company that can help you brand your business properly. In your branding, you need to think about your business color. You want to think about your fonts. You want to think about your language. All right. Now, what do I mean by colors? The color pink is all about being chic. It's feminine. It's a mature color. It's also a color that depicts nurture. I and mean, we're very careful to choose this color at the beginning. All right. So when you think about your color, make sure you choose a color that is true to your business ideology and the overall theme or emotion you want to evoke in the minds of your customers when they come in contact with your business. You also need to choose a secondary color which will complement the main color. All right, so that then there's no color clashing. So for example, we don't have like a nice baby pink at Dainty Affairs and now have like a very off red as the second color, no. So if we're pairing any color on our logo or our branding with Dainty Affairs, you will see that we've chosen pastel colors and specifically these pastel colors are um, like light gray, like a very light shade of blue and of course the cream. And then, you know, because they combine harmoniously, each time we get to designing our graphics or putting out information for the world to see, they have to, you know, be connected with this brand ideology. So we always stick to that. Another thing you want to consider when it comes to your branding is your language. How do you speak? How do you address your customers? Believe me, guys, you don't necessarily have to always show your face, okay? But if there's someone who's supposed to be your brand um, face or your brand personality or your brand inf influencer, how does this person speak? Now, if your products are tied to um, adults or like um, young, um, the young crowd, you want to make sure you have chosen an influencer or you yourself, if you have decided to be your brand identity, you make sure that the way you come out, the way you speak can hit the nail on the head and allow your, your target audience to connect with you, enjoy what you're saying and automatically be won over to you as a tribe. I hope that makes sense. It's time for number seven, the big M word, marketing. <laughs> you just mentioned that word and everyone just cringes. Marketing. Now, marketing can be complicated and it can be very simple. It really depends on your thoughts on what marketing should be. Simply put, marketing is about just allowing the next person know what you are doing. Okay? It's just as simple as that. So how can I allow someone who doesn't know me from Adam know that I run a cake business and better still, I make the best cakes in the whole of Nigeria? How? It's all about marketing. You will find out that it's not necessarily the best bakers that have the most customers. Sometimes it's now a situation about the person who makes the most quote and unquote noise is the person who has the most customers. Now, depending on how you look at this, 
you will understand that marketing has a big role to play in any business. Or else you'll just find out that you're like a man who is winking in the dark. Only you know what you're doing and nobody else knows what you're doing. Okay, so once you realize that, you need to think about the strategy you want to market your business. And this, guys, needs a lot of brainstorming. If you can't do it by yourself, by all means, hire a professional. But because a lot of startups are running with minimal funds, they want to do everything by themselves. And that is okay. The most important thing is doing it properly so that you're not wasting money. Now, do you need to pay for marketing? Right now, guys, is the best time to advertise anything. With the advent of social media, yo, you've pretty much become like your own television. How would you like it if you put on the TV one day and you watch something that is so interesting and then you go to the TV the next day and you watch that same thing? <laughs> I'm sure you would give them the benefits of the doubt that, okay, maybe they're just doing a, a rebroadcast. And then you go again the third day and you see the same thing. Would you want to come there the next day? <laughs> no. So think about the fact that you have become the mouthpiece of your business. You have become your business's television and you owe the, your business that publicity. So who is even your target audience? Where are they? Where do they hang out? So if your target audience are between the ages of 15 to what, 35, where are they most likely to be? They're likely to be online. What are the sp specific places they like to go to? They love entertainment. They love food. They love fashion. Okay, now you will need to strategically go to places like this where you can creatively let them know what you're doing. So if your marketing strategy is digital, you need to make sure that you're placing adverts on these platforms I have just mentioned. And if your target audience or you're making cakes that is more for the health conscious, the feed farm, you want to make sure that you go to occasions or places online that are talking about fitness, are talking about um, um, wellness, and are talking about how to stay fit. There is where you will target your advertising, okay? You will find out that the reason why a lot of cake business owners are struggling with marketing is because they first haven't thought about what they want to do properly. They're just going with the flow and just putting their things everywhere. So I tell you guys, if you specifically sit down and first of all, understand who your customer is and understand properly what you bring to the table and you have the right language to communicate with them based on your branding, you'll be able to connect with them in a very seamless way. All right. So these days, I would say digital marketing is it. We don't want you, you know taking your flyers and standing at the roadside and handing it over to people. That is a waste of time, a waste of energy. I mean, who is doing that these days? People will just take the flyer and toss it somewhere. That's money you have wasted, okay? So another tip you need to learn as a cake business owner to start your business is you need to also know how to create content for your business that will be interesting and engaging enough. No one can tell your story the way you can tell your story. So if you're baking in your home, for example, even breaking those eggs is content. Can we have you take your phone and, you know, creatively position it in a way that you're breaking the eggs and then you post it up on social media and you're, and you're saying stuff like, oh, how many eggs am I cracking today? You know, find a way to create a story out of all your tasks in the day. You'll find out that Everything you're doing at any point in time during your, your time at work is an opportunity for you to market your business. Just make sure you creatively do this. I mean, the bakery space, especially where you're baking, is not the most tidy, especially when you're doing that actual work. There are eggs, there's flour here and there. You need to know how to position your phone or your camera in such a way that it brings out the beauty of what you're doing and doesn't just make a mess of what you're doing in your bakery all right number nine on the list is accounting now accounting is so important because this is what will actually make you know that you're running a business and whether the business is successful or not okay you will find out that in the course of your daily runs or your daily execution in the bakery you spend money on so 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 things those things have to be itemized all right you will also notice that money is coming in all this money has to be itemized. 
at the end of the month, if you have an accountant, which is what I advocate for, I think it's important that every bakery business owner should have an accountant because the benefits far outweigh the negative. You might think it's expensive, but believe me, if you get someone who can come in and audit your accounts, you know, you will find out that you already know where the loopholes are. You'll be able to plan properly. And it's just something you don't have to deal with on a monthly basis. Because if you're like me, guys, all I love to do is be creative and enjoy what I'm doing. We at Dainty Affairs have an accounts department that does what they are paid to do, which is to make sure that our numbers are fantastic. So guys, this is very important. Look into it. But if you're doing it by yourself now, which is completely okay, make sure you have a process in place. Have a stock book that allows you to write down all the stock you bring in, how much it is, what was bought, when it was bought, and who it was bought from. And then have a format whereby every money that is being paid into your account is specified by name, by what was ordered, by the, um, the time it was paid, and of course the amount it w that was paid. These two information right there is what will help you understand or decide whether you're running a profitable bakery business or not. And if you're not at the moment, it will also make you decide what you should spend more attention on or what you should develop so that you can do better in your bakery business. All right? And finally, we've come to number 10, growth. Wow, growth is so important because we find out that as cake business owners, we get a bit too comfortable with where we are. Okay, and this is what I mean. You've been doing things on a certain level, in a certain way for years, and you're just comfortable in that space. You will just find out that things will just change. And because you haven't evolved, everyone has left you behind. And you just feel like, what am I doing wrong? Now, it's important for you to know as a cake business owner, you need to grow. What is your growth strategy? Do you want to remain as a home baker? Do you want to move out and have your own retail outlet? And do you want to scale up your business and begin to, you know, service other businesses? Or do you want to remain as a B2C where you're just constantly working with, you know, one-on-one -on -one customers? Now, growth is so important. And when you have that at the back of your mind, it helps you to make better decisions. You want to make sure that you evolve in your presentation of cake making. You want to make sure that the type of cakes you make today are even a step ahead of your competition. That is so important. You want to make sure that you invest in yourself and invest in your team, your staff, and make sure that they are capable and properly equipped to churn out cakes or products that are relevant for today. Today, you will find out that a lot of customers are, oh, I want low sugar this, oh, I want low sugar that. That's completely okay if that's not your core. But I'm saying if your cake business was in that type of, of place where you're so keen on doing healthy products, you want to make sure that you are able to cater and constantly, you know, you are the cake business owner that comes to mind when your target audience needs a treat. So we also want to talk about the fact that growth will also allow you to get into places you've never got into before. Um, as a cake business owner, I started just in my mother's kitchen years ago as a teenager. But today, beyond baking, beyond product development, beyond branding for even other cake businesses, I'm able to have a cake business show where I'm able to teach on my learnings over the years. You see how you know, my loving the art of cake has allowed me to explore other opportunities that are still in line with the major thing that I love to do, which is to cake anyway. So guys, this is my top 10 tips. I really hope you've learned something today. And if you did, make sure you put a comment below, share with your cake friends, and of course, subscribe and hit that bell notification so that once we put up a new video, you're the first to see it. So thank you so much for joining me. I cannot wait to see you on our next edition. Bye for now.